OK. Uh, yeah, I think just the first three rows need it. So ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do to factor by distributive property, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to find the GCF. All right? What we're going to do is we're going to find the GCF, and then we're going to divide out the GCF. No, he's not today. Thank you. So what we need to do to do this problem is first, let's go ahead and determine what the GCF is between these two terms. So what is the largest number that both divides into 64 and 40? So you need to, again, determine what is the largest number that goes into 64 and 40. Huh? OK, well, let's, let's pull out 8 and let's see if we can do it again. So let's see if 8 and see if that works. So if we say the GCF is 8, what you're going to do, is there any variables that they share? No. So what you're going to do when you pull out, what you're doing is you're dividing out your GCF. So let's divide by 8. So you're going to take your GCF and you're going to divide all your terms by 8. That's what we call distribu or factoring by distributive property. So 64 divided by 8 is 8. Okay. And then 40 divided by 8 is 5, I'm sorry, 40AB divided by 8 is 5AB. So now what we're going to do is, so that's it divided by, and we're just going to rewrite it as a multiplication problem. Well, why would you multiply it? All we're doing is I'm practicing rewriting this problem as a multiplication problem. Let's work on distributive property back again. Does this give us back our original answer? Yeah. What's 8 times 8? 64. What's 8 times negative 5AB? Negative 40AB. So what we're practicing doing is rewriting our equations. Does that make sense? Yep. Right. Okay. Yes. Like so after we divide it and then put it in, this, in the parentheses, parentheses have to, uh, put, the after put your GCF back on the outside. All right. So okay. We, that's how you get it. That's how you get that it. is your answer right there. So and you could always check your work. Okay. So you just want to just to get to that. 